Hello my friends, welcome to The Electric Viking. Fantastic to see you again now. If you've already subscribed, thank you. I appreciate your support. It means a lot to me. And it's the reason why this channel is still going. Basically, the subscribers able, enable me to monetize the channel to make enough money to kind of keep it all going. So thank you for your support. Now, Nissan and Mitsubishi have announced that they are joining together to build a key car, K-E-I car, basically a Wuling Hongwan Mini EV for Japan, which is going to be very, very expensive. It's said to cost more than 18,000 US dollars. And it's similar in size to Wuling Hongwan Mini and to other Chinese EVs which have just been launched on the market, which are bigger than the Wuling Hongwan Mini. And in fact, its specifications are not all that different either. Very interesting times here. I'm not sure how Nissan and Mitsubishi plan on competing with these Chinese automakers. I think maybe they'd be better off simply outsourcing the building of this vehicle to one of the many Chinese EV companies and then simply rebranding it like many companies do. Many companies in China do this right now. So recently Nissan announced it plans to launch an all new, all electric mini vehicle in Japan in early FY 2021, meaning from April 1, 2022 to March 31, 2023. I don't understand what's going on there. Basically, they're giving us a year range in which they may build the car or may release it, giving them some time to potentially uh, catch up with their timeline. Anyway, I'm not sure. But at least we know that it will definitely be here on the market by March 31, 2023. Still a year and a half away. So this project is a joint venture with Mitsubishi, Nissan's alliance partner through the NMKV Company Limited 50-50 joint venture. It means that most likely we will see similar electric mini vehicles offered by both Nissan and by Mitsubishi. Probably the same vehicle, either rebranded, maybe with some different styling on the outside, but essentially the same vehicle. Now, we don't actually know how it's going to look, but I'm going to guess it's going to probably look a little bit like the concept IMK that they brought out in 2019. Good chance it will look the same potentially as this vehicle. Now, Nissan says that their new electric mini vehicle will redefine the segment and offer EV typical char characteristics like acceleration, a smooth and quiet drive. This is what they said. The planned mini vehicle is aimed to redefine the popular car category in Japan, featuring instant acceleration, smooth driving and cabin quietness that are key characteristics of electric vehicles. It will also come with a variety of advanced technologies, including driver assistance technologies. Now, if this vehicle comes out in a year and a half, even a year, it's got to compete on price. And it's going to cost over 18,000 US dollars. That's a lot of money for a micro car. I personally believe Nissan and Mitsubishi, if they price this car this high, they're going to struggle to compete because battery costs are continually coming down. As you all know, BYD's battery costs have come down significantly to be below 100 US dollars per kilowatt hour. CATL's battery costs are definitely coming down. Lithium ion phosphate battery costs are coming down massively. Elon Musk even just said he thinks the future of the automobile is lithium ion phosphate batteries. That the majority of the market will be lithium ion phosphate batteries. The Blade battery, CATL, number world's the number one biggest battery manufacturer, makes lithium ion phosphate battery cells. Prices are coming down. And yet, they're clearly selling this vehicle for significantly more than its petrol counterpart. You can buy petrol versions of this vehicle for well under 15,000 US dollars, well under, more like 10,000 US dollars in Japan. So why it is Nissan and Mitsubishi are going to sell this at a basically almost 100% markup on a nice version says to me that they're well behind in terms of their actual build costs compared to companies like BYD and potentially to companies like Tesla. Obviously, Tesla plans on also bringing up the Model 2. They'll definitely sell this vehicle in Japan. My question is, of course, if you can buy a Tesla Model 2 for, say, 20 to 25,000 US dollars, would you want this micro car for 18,000 US dollars plus? Tough sell, tough sell. Now, a few details of the vehicle have been revealed. It will have a 20 kilowatt hour battery, which is expected, of course, to be enough to cover daily needs in a country like Japan. And Nissan says there will be an energy export feature, vehicle to home and electric outlets. So basically, if you had a 
blackout, you could use this car to run your home electricity for a certain period of time. Of course, it's a relatively small battery. You probably wouldn't want to do this for too long, but it's good to have that feature there anyway. Nissan said, with a nominal battery capacity of 20 kilowatt hours, the EV mini vehicle has a driving range designed to cover daily needs in Japan. In addition to its mobility uses, the vehicle can provide electricity from its battery to a home and in emergencies can act as a mobile power source. At 3.4 meters long, 1.5 meters wide, 1.65 meters high, the mini vehicle has been designed to provide easy driving and handling in Japan's often cramped traffic environments. Purchase prices, listed price minus subsidies, are forecast to start at approximately 2 million yen. So like I said, its starting price is 18,000 US dollars. Ouch, that's in a year from now, EVs will continue to come down in price, except for this, it seems. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, Sam, the Wuling Hongwan Mini EV is smaller than this, and you would be right. But it's also one fifth of the price. You could buy five Wuling Hongwan Mini EVs, which are a little bit smaller, for the same price as the base model version of this car. Is that Fair enough. Well, obviously the Wuling Hongwan Mini EV, EV is technically a quadricycle. This is technically a car. So there's some key differences, including safety features, which enable this to be called a car and not a quadricycle. So they're different. But remember, the Wuling Hongwan Mini EV is being sold in Europe right now for not a lot more money. It's only around about, I think, 3,000 US dollars more for the highest spec model with a bigger range than the, than the base model but with all the safety features it needs to be called a car. So even if the vehicle in Europe, the Hong Wan Mini in Europe, is being sold for $3,000 more, it's still nearly only a third of the cost of this vehicle. So what's going to happen in the market? Well, battery costs are going to continue to come down. More manufacturers are going to start making these EVs, these small mini EVs. And if Nissan and Mitsubishi can't cut their costs lower, by obviously coming together and making this vehicle on the same platform, then they're going to struggle to sell this vehicle because, like I said, manufacturers very soon, BYD is already doing it now, will be selling their battery-powered vehicles at the same cost as their ICE, as their petrol vehicles. So really, the price of this car should be around about $10,000 US if it's to be competitive with others on the market. Now, of course, all this, well, most of this is dependent upon whether or not China actually imports their cars to Japan. Does this happen? Well, I think it will. I think that if, it, if the cars don't come, these mini cars don't come from China directly to Japan under their current brand names, I believe other companies, including, yes, Toyota, who is going to struggle with its sales declining over the next decade, as they're not prepared to sell EVs, I think companies like Toyota may pivot by essentially rebranding these Chinese EVs, Chinese EVs and calling them Toyotas. Very likely in my view. Thanks for watching the channel. Looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye-bye.